Okay, so I see it has just struck 11, so I think we shall kick off. And good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. I hope everyone had a really, really great week. Um, if not, it's always the weekend tomorrow, so we can always look forward to that. Also drawing through to a close for August, and next week we'll be ushering in spring here in South Africa, so it's always good. Uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us for this really great series. It's called the Civil Collaboration Series. And today, part one is going to be focusing on Autodesk Civil 3D and InfraWix. And it's presented by myself, Shoeb Yunus. I'm the BIM Technical Specialist for Civil Infrastructure and Mining here at Bay Campaigns. So let's have a look at what this series entails. And I'll give you a little bit of background as to why I thought of actually hosting this series. OK, so first of all, being a BIM technical specialist, also a civil consultant, um, we always hear challenges faced in the industry, whether you're civil, structural, mechanical, architectural, uh, any multidiscipline or consortium or anyone that needs to actually integrate and collaborate is the biggest problem amongst disciplines. So I thought, hey, let's try and cook up something here. And this uh, led us to this five part webinar series. So this civil collaboration series will be five parts, and we'll be looking at collaborating across various software or disciplines. So whichever bucket you want to put it in, you feel free to do that. But it's all within the infrastructure industry. Everyone knows that the biggest industry like throughout the world in terms of variety, scope and broadness is actually infrastructure. So I thought I will try and help you guys to actually bring it together. And it's a bit of a daunting task, but we'll see how it goes, right? Um, in terms of the series itself, we'll, be, we'll try to actually build on the same model throughout. Uh, if you join my previous series, I think it was for uh, stormwater design using IDAS. We built on the model uh, throughout the entire series, so it was a continuation. And we found out that that was really, really great for the users to follow as well. Uh, but I think we'll try and keep that same uh, methodology here. So we'll start from conceptual design and we will make our way up right to final visual realistic design. So I would definitely say stay tuned to the series. Don't miss it. It's going to be a really, really good one. And just a disclaimer, the focus will be primarily on civil collaboration and not modeling, right? Most of the modeling tasks that you would probably see here or uh, steps as to where I got to have been covered in my previous webinar. They are all on our YouTube channel and I'll have all of the details at the end. And of course, this webinar will be recorded. So um, if you want to go always watch it again, just stick around till the end. I'll show you where to find it. And today we're going to be looking at part one, InfraWorks and Civil 3D. As you can see, the software that I plan to use in this series is quite a stack. It is a lot, all right, because I want to make um, most of the software talk to each other. Majority of them are all in the AEC collection, Architecture, Engineering and Construction collection for Autodesk. Uh, with Inventor making its way in. You'll see that um, sooner or later in the series, we're going to bring Inventor in here. But if you're looking at the hero products or the design tools that are commonly used, Civil 3D, InfraWorks, Revit, AutoCAD, and Inventor are all are going to be touched on in this series. So it's going to be a really, really cool series, really great um, insight to it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so now that you've got some background on how this collaboration series popped up. This is our agenda for today's session. So of course, we always give a quick intro on who we are as Baker Band. So you know what we do, how we can help you and what we're busy with at the moment. And then I'm just diving in straight to the topic. Um, if you've joined my previous pre uh, webinars, you know, I always give a description of the software and how, where you can get it and stuff like that. I've kind of cut that out and jumped straight to the actual demonstration uh, because I think the user should know exactly what the software are about. But if you don't have uh, any background in it, you can always contact me. But you're going to see I've kind of filtered it out to four core topics, geolocation, conceptual design, roads, intersection, roundabouts, and transitioning to civil 3D. 
but there is much more content in this webinar. And then we're going to conclude. We'll take questions at the end. Um, so if anything pops in your mind, you're welcome to, uh, to send it into the chat box, but I'll only get to it at the end. Okay, so Baker Benz, who are we? So as you can see, our motto is we solve our, we solve our customer problems through digital transformation, helping them to design and make a better world. So that is our motto and that's literally what we live by. If you wanna know in terms of the finer details, this is us in a snapshot. Uh, we do laser scanning, we do training, we do software training, we do software implementations. Uh, we partner with a lot of uh, different exciting brands. Uh, two things that actually stand out on this is we are an Autodesk service service provider select. It's a very niche market to be a part of, meaning that we have professionals in different industries at the right caliber to actually help you to do consulting, design, and so on. And we're also listed on the Autodesk services marketplace pro as a marketplace provider, which is really good. In terms of the technologies, the brands that we uh, promote and we believe in, of course, everyone knows Autodesk. They have made brilliant tools throughout the entire world. It's adopted very widely and it has led to a lot of other technological partners trying to integrate with their software because they are the leaders in terms of design. Uh, so your Civil 3Ds, AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, InfraWorks, all of that is done at Autodesk. Um, everyone generically knew them first as the AutoCAD people because that's where everyone started off at, but they have grown and evolved in many, many ways. Um, in terms of laser scanning, we partner with Leica and Topcon. Leica for interior designs or interior scanning of buildings with the BLK360. And of course the Topcon, that machine there is the GTL1000, it's the latest in the Topcon offerings. Really, really good scanning. And there's also the GLS2000 that's for more rugged or civil applications. Either as you should know who they are by now from my last uh, webinar series, but it's a really amazing add-on tool to Civil 3D that just streamlines civil infrastructure design. It is just amazing. So if you are a civil uh, engineer and you do civil designs, please check out IDAS in conjunction with Civil 3D. It's actually brilliant. And last but not least, CAD learning. CAD learning is the foundation for any designer. And why I say this is I myself, because of so many uh, multidisciplinary projects being a part of, you have to integrate with different tools depending on uh, scope requirements. CAD learning helps you to learn on the go because it's an online platform where you could click on, for example, Civil 3D. It has pre-recorded videos with exercise files to check on. You can test yourself. You can get a custom learning path. It's just brilliant development tool if you want to be a really, really good designer. So yeah, our details will be at the end. If you want to know any more further on any of this, please reach out. In terms of the industries that we support, so build being architectural and structural engineering, anything going up towards the sky, hence we've got that. So we call it vertical construction. We've got specialists in that. Uh, manufacturing, so if you are into the ma manufacturing space, we also do all of those type of applications. Civil infrastructure and mining is which the core spaces that I play in, as well as energy. So you can see those are the critical elements for infrastructure and we actually support all of them. We've got different specialists specializing in different fields, but as you know, civil infrastructure is in the middle of all of them. So I kind of get to play a little bit in each of them. And last but not least about us, we bring everything together with a consulting methodology unique to us called iAdopt. We assess your current situation. We educate you uh, using the teach uh, fish for yourself methodology. But if it's a bit out of your depth, we can also consult with you to bring about for positive change management as well as digital transformation in your company. So that's it. Um, that's our intro. That's our quick snapshot of credentials. Again, if you want more, my details will be at the end. But let's jump into the exciting part, which is the series. All right. So this is the project scenario that I have created. I hope I have not bit of more that I could chew here, but uh, let's see how it goes. 
So first of all, we have, just think of this as a design brief or a project brief that you would get normally in civil consulting if you're a consultant. So the site that has been identified is for an office park that the client wants to build. The site is located here in the Hart Beersput Dam in South Africa. So I chose a South African um, location. You'll see why just now, because our survey coordinate is a bit unique uh, compared to the default one that's built into the software. And the office park will be consisting of a variety of civil infrastructure elements, namely roads, roundabouts, intersections, gradings, buildings, and landscape architecture. So your trees, your grassing, your paving, all of those type of things. And maybe more that's not on that list, but you get the gist of it. And what we are going to be doing in this series is we're going to start at concept and make our way all the way to final visual design. So it's going to be a journey. I am going to try and keep it as brief, but as detailed as possible, which is a quite a fine line to tread. But of course, if you have any questions, please at the end, give us a shout and we will tackle them together. Great. So let's start off with the South African coordinate system and order this civil 3D. Now, most of the design tools are all designed in the Northern Hemisphere. So America, Europe, and their coordinate system works completely different to ours in terms of the uh, parameters that are built into the software. So we use a different projection system where they use a northern and easting where we've got also a southing and westing type of integration. But let me try and explain it to you as briefly as I can from some of the documentation that I found on for surveying. Okay, so you can see that this is readily available online. You can find it, right? It's by Aslam Parker. And uh, the it explains the South African coordinate system, the reference system, how it works, those type of things. So let's have a look. It's on Position IT's website. So let me just give you a quick, quick <laughs> brief. I'm not a surveyor, but I'll give you a, a description. First of all, you can see this gives us an indication of how meridians work and those type of things. And we got westings and southings, of course. And this, the you've got the central meridian running down, but we have to apply a correction into Civil 3D, where we have to make it increase to the east and to the north according to our meridian or our projection system. And we have to multiply those coordinates by minus one. This will allow us to get a correct representation or geospatial or geolocated site. So I'm gonna to switch to Civil 3D. All right, we're gonna now go into the Map 3D interface. Remember Map 3D is built into Civil 3D, very powerful application and what we're going to do is we are going to go and actually edit, or I'm going to show you what I've done to create this correction in the software. Again, you will do it only once per Allo system. So the Allo system we are working on for this project is Allo 27, All right? We're using the hardware hook, that is the latest one. You see if I search South Africa, all of our systems are on there. The ones with the NEG next to it are the ones that are corrected. And the ones without it are the ones that come default with the software. So let's go have a look at how the default system looks and what's different in the corrected uh, application of it. Okay, so once you click view, it might take a few seconds to load. Here we go. As you can see, all the metadata is attached. The projection system is also there, which is fine, but we're interested in the parameters. So by default, the X increases to the West, and the Y in the software increases to the south. That should be different. That should be east and north, all right? According to our projection system. So what we can do, we can create a duplicate of it, rename it, and we can change those parameters. So I'm gonna show you the one that I have changed. So if I go to view, right? You can see I renamed it to negative, so I know that it is the correct one. And there's the parameters. You see the X is increasing to the east and the Y is increasing to the north. So that's all you will have to do, but it's not a matter of just doing it. You need to understand why you're doing it. And uh, shout out to Antonin, one of my colleagues in uh, civil infrastructure. He made me really understand this really well. 
and um, it's because of him that I got a good firm understanding on it. So thank you to that. All right, so once that is set up, I think we are good to go, but that's where it all starts, getting the coordinates right, getting the geolocation right. And you'll see as we're progressing now with the presentation or this webinar, you'll see how much of sense it makes. Okay, so now that we've got the coordination part of it or the geolocation part of it down in terms of the correction, we are now gonna look at creating a conceptual site in InfraWorks. So let's jump in here. So this is the 2021 interface, as you can see that, right? The great thing is now it's integrated with BIM 360. So probably later on in the series, I'll just drop my project in there. And the great thing is it allows for remote working collaboration much more efficiently. You can see it has loaded my projects. If it's in the wrong project, you can always go and click and view your entire list of BIM 360 projects. There's a lot of help resources. Okay, so if you are new to it, it's very easy. The learning curve of InfraWorks is very, very easy. But if you're not using a very high spec computer, you can actually go and optimize it in terms of speed or quality. I am running risky here. I'm gonna put it on quality. I'm just running a 16 gig notebook. So let's see what happens. But if it does get a bit finicky, we can always put it back to uh, speed. There's also help resources like you've seen there. Um, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the awesome model builder. I think if you see this and you have InfraWorks, you're not gonna touch Google Earth again, but uh, let's see. So by default, it opens to United States. Like I said, most of them are developed there. I'm gonna go uh, to bring our local Islamic like South Africa in. And I'm gonna just find my site. So it's gonna be at a hard PS with dam, right? Uh, I think I spelled that wrong. Okay, here we go. Uh, you see it picks up the locations. Here we are. So once I click on that pin, it will snap to the area. I can then switch to aerial if I wanna see a much more visual realistic representation and I can pan a bit. So you can see it brought it in and where I want to actually develop or the site that's identified is actually here. Okay, so here we are. That's where we can develop. It's a nice good spot of land. Again, completely random. <laughs> I chose that site. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. So what I can do now is I can actually define the model extent. It does not have to be that big if I'm just dealing with that area. You can see it's under 84 square kilometers, quite huge. Give it a name and create model. But I just thought I'll create a nice big model for you to check it out to see how cool it is. Um, and this is where we're gonna go set the analysis now. In the new InfraWorks 2021, you cannot assign that negative or that corrective system first. We will use the one that's out of the box first because if you do that, it does not recognize it on the model system on the cloud. And you will get a, an email to say it's been unsuccessful. So once I click OK and it's created, I will get an email to say, hey, success, your model has been created, go and check it out. And then if I go to my interface, there it is over there, right? There's our model, pretty, pretty damn good, I must say. Okay, uh, it's built on a gaming engine, so the render quality is quite impressive, um, especially on my not so high spec computer. But as you can see, I can pan around, you can see the water is animated, sunlight on the water. Um, you've got the terrain that's actually quite nicely shaped. I can also switch uh, in terms of whatever I want. For example, the engineering view will bring up all of the design elements. So you can see now the contours, it dims the actual uh, background image of, of the big maps, right? And I can just pan around and look at all of the infrastructure. So you can see all of the roads. And here is our site. You can see that there are contours that are visible on there. So I didn't just take a generic site that's very easy. We're gonna grade it to a, a finished elevation. I'm gonna add a bookmark so and call it site layout. Uh, what this does is no matter where I am in the model, if I go and select that bookmark, it will jump to that view for me. So very, very handy tool. If you haven't used a bookmark, please incorporate it. It's gonna make your life much more easy. In terms of the functionality in InfraWorks, we've got transportation, structures, drainage, 
and we've got some analysis tool structure guys if you're doing bridges you can do line girt analysis um the tmh is not built in there yet but you can use i think the british code but we'll look at that as we go along um you've got the model properties where we can make it much more realistic so i'm going to set it to the date and time of today so a little bit earlier this morning right so what that does is it will geolocate it or pick up the weather conditions based on this time that i'm setting it's quite unreal um, that impacts shadow study shadow effects lighting sun position those type of things uh, and then you see it has been updated you can also see the x y coordinates and the z looks actually pretty good for south african uh, terrain it looks quite accurate um, disclaimer do not use the conceptual uh, site that has been built into civil 3d i mean to infraworks wait for your surveyor to give you the final design uh, we can bring in a variety of data as you can see there okay um, but yeah for your final designs or detailed designs do not use the prelim surface or the aerial surface that it gives you from infraworks it might not be to the level of accuracy that you need so don't say i didn't tell you <laughs> right so let's see so our site has now been created okay we've allocated it we created the model pretty damn good and now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the grading so how would you let's say we created a platform in this uh, scenario i used a finished elevation level of 1180 relative to the terrain data how can i propose this in a conceptual design stage it's normally damn tough because you'll have to model something either in civil 3d hopefully not autocad because uh, that's going to be very painful but how would you show your grading in such a conceptual way where first of all you can actually get the slope that you want to use on your bank even though it's in a conceptual design stage well you can in infraworks so here is our site now check this out now again good practices do not overwrite on the master copy so i am going to create a conceptual um, design proposal this will not override the existing model please don't do that it becomes problematic um, you don't want to override on the existing or the natural uh, model so i created a conceptual design uh, proposal that's what we call it in infraworks so any work that's done here now it does not override the master file so we're going to go to the create tab on the top there's something called coverages and we're going to select grading now what's great about this again remember it is conceptual design but the level of detail that you're going to get is amazing you can also select the type of material that you're going to be using for this office park or for your grading site or for your platform i am going to go for manicured grass try and keep a little bit fancy and i'm going to define my area now if you do have this data in the conceptual design stage or in your tender stage which is very unlikely um, you can actually bring in that earth set out data or your gis data to demarcate it but for now we're going to plot it just by clicking and here we are it has created it for us if i zoom in i'm hoping you can see the texture on your side but you will be able to see that the render material gets much more detailed as you zoom in so the level of detail is quite great and for visualization later on you will see where it comes into play but again i don't want to give away too much in the series okay so now what we can do is i'm going to adjust all of those vertices to the finish level that i want okay but before we do that we're going to grade it so i'm going to create a custom grade where i'm going to use a rock fill for the banks and i'm going to use a 50 percent slope so hence two to one and boom your banking is done that is quite crazy i mean imagine we are still in a conceptual design stage and if i zoom in check how cool this is you'll actually see the the grains of sand between the actual uh, rock full bedding which is really damn cool so that's why i decided to use that to just show you that it is quite visual out of the box and now i'm going to just adjust the elevation right so 
a z value i said is going to be 1180 relative to the terrain of course it's going to jump higher i want my design to be at a higher level of course if you're doing drainage design and you want your platform to be slightly sloped you can go in input custom elevations at each uh, vertice which is another crazy uh, good functionality so just bear with me we've got about three more vertices to do um, and we'll just type that in very quickly but you can see it's a dynamic in nature just like civil 3d because as you raise it the banking actually updates itself so you can see it's maintaining that slope right and we are still getting a very decent conceptual design model and you know most of the decisions are made on conceptual intent or design intent so if you can show your client this or if you can convey your design intent in a visual manner as this you pretty much got it signed off okay you can also create various options in one design model using the proposals but i'm quite happy with that i'm maybe gonna just edit it because it's going outside my extents as you can see on the left there so i am gonna bring in or adjust the xy location as you can see we can type in exact xy coordinates if we had them alternatively if we had a shape file you could have used that or a setting out file lanx and all those type of things but i'm just using drag and drop here right also the area is automatically updated and calculated you can see i'm using quite a big area for this webinar okay triple six i did not plan that <laughs> um, but uh, yeah it's quite a big area to use really good size model to do a webinar bit of pressure on my side but we'll see let's let's see how it goes so i'm quite happy i think that looks great and our grading for our site has actually been done all right so now let's jump into the infrastructure which is the roads right so we're going to be predominantly focusing on the transport of this part of the um, office park and InfraWorks has something called a road style. Now, when you're doing transportation, there's two types of road options that you have. One is a planning road and one is a component road. A component road can be designed with a very, very high detail or level of detail because you can actually even pull out a long section in InfraWorks, which is crazy. But if you're just doing a quick mock-up or a conceptual design just for relative positioning layout and just painting a picture, I would say use planning roads. I use it first uh, before I go to the conceptual or the uh, component road part of it because the functionality and the snapping and the ease of use is so much better. But you would need to create a style which will make it much more custom to your application. I know I did say that we're not going to be focusing on modeling that much, but I thought I'll throw this in. So this is going to be on the modeling part. So I hope you enjoy. OK, so here's our platform. We're great with it. And we've got something called a style palette. And this is where a lot of pre-configured, pre-created, out-of-the-box objects are in InfraWorks. Now, you can see the roads are also created pretty damn good. OK. and just to show you what the styles look like. So we've got two lanes going in either direction. We've got a median, we've got some pretty trees there, and we also got the metadata that's attached to it. Okay. Let's go and create, or let me give you the methodology behind creating the actual styles. So first of all, we are going to create a copy of a style. Okay. Right, so the best way is to duplicate it first. So we are going to go to select any style that we want to work off from. And then from there, so for example, if I use the styles out of the box, like what you're seeing here, and I draw in using the planning roads, this is how it's going to look. Okay, so you see, it brings in all of that data for you, but there's no metadata that's attached to uh, different types of things there. 
right? So that's what we can actually see on our screen. So if I zoom in, you can see it's very realistic as well, where it picks up the shadows of the trees. Uh, looks pretty damn good. We've got a bike lane, we've got lanes, we've got trees, we've got light posts, very, very comprehensive parametric, right? But this is just, think of it as a block or a placeholder. You can't really edit much on the left. You can change it if you want to. So if you use the difference, if you want to change that to maybe palm trees, I'm from the coasts, right? Uh, but actually, let's just keep it to red. So this is actually one of the styles that I used uh, to actually edit my custom styles for this uh, webinar. It looks pretty good. Like I said, it's built on a gaming rendering uh, engine. So it looks very, very good visually. So let's delete this and let's create, or let me show you how to create a custom style. Okay. So we're gonna first create a duplicate of an existing style to make it easier to work from, All right? So I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna give it a name. Let's just call it example. So I'll help you to get on your way to actually create some really cool stuff. And then we can go and hit edit. Now, this is really nice to do on two screens because there's a lot of pop-up menus that are gonna come up for the customization, but I had to try and use one screen on this. So let's say, for example, I want to change the median width to 3.5 meters. If I hit enter, look at the bottom, it instantly updates, okay? So all of these are parametric to an extent where you, as soon as you update it, it will update visually at the bottom. So let's say maybe it was four lanes coming, four lanes going. You see at the bottom, it also updated the width. Okay. Um, the lane widths are set to three meters. I can switch off the line marking if I don't want to see it. Same like layers in AutoCAD. And I can also go customize certain things like maybe I don't want so many of those lights. Those are called decorations in, in InfraWorks. Custom profiles works more or less the same, but you would need to generate your own object. So I'm gonna remove those lights and you'll see below now it's gone, okay? And we can go select, oh, there is a very, very big library in here. So there's so many things. But what I like with the software is the visual representation because sometimes if you, select something in the menu, like what we're gonna do now on purpose, it looks correct there, but in the model, it's not the correct thing. Can you see? This looks like, you know, when you're on the highway and you see like in those boards, sign boards with the robots on them, that's what it is and it's wrong. So it's a nice way to actually check if you're actually dropping in correct stuff, okay? So let's leave the lights off for now. Uh, and let's go and put in, or oh, let's change the trees on the median. So maybe I don't want that tree, okay? There's a lot of vegetation that's built into it, InfraWorks, look at this. These are all pre-built out of the box. You don't have to create anything custom. If you do have custom 3D models, you can import them into your InfraWorks and use them for future projects. That's quite straightforward as well. But I'm just going to give you like a preview of what's there, All right? You can see there's a street lab. I will use those on the side just now. Um, but for now, we're going to just find some trees. Let's go to adaptive trees. I think that'll be a good one. And let's use the spruce tree. It looks kind of like a like Christmas tree. Um, hit OK. But you'll see what happens. It is huge. It is absolutely huge for my road. I, it's not a good idea. Okay, but we can edit it. So I'm just gonna move this to the right. And yeah, that's a bit too big, but we can customize it using the, the parametric values here. So I'm gonna space it at 40 meters. You see it updated at the bottom. Okay. And again, I can go and scale this, right? And also don't like where it's sitting, it's on the road. So we can create an offset. Maybe let's try 1.5. So I'm gonna just select that 1.5. Let's see where it moves. Uh, almost there, I think two will be good for this example. So 
Let's go and try two. So let me select that, hit two, enter. And here we are. I think that looks quite good for me. Now I'm just gonna play with the size of the actual tree. That is a bit too big for my liking. All right, so I can go and adjust the scale. So I'm gonna make it half the size. So 0.5. That's right, 0.5. You'll see, so if you're from the South Coast like I am, you'll see a lot of these paper trees that are very thin. Can you see I actually created that by using the scale? It was quite cool. I just thought I'll drop that in there. Um, but yeah, let's just drop the EZ value and make it very proper. Uh, I, can, I can deal with that. I think that looks quite cool. And that's it. I'm happy with the trees. I can hit OK. And now it's saved to my style. Okay. Um, actually, we forgot to put in the lights. So let's go and put in the lights. I don't want you guys driving in the dark there. So let's go add in some lights quickly. All right. So again, we'll go to the decorations. I'm showing you very basic customization, but the methodology is the same. And you can do some really brilliant styles in Infowords. So again, uh, let's, where did I see this thing? Uh, just give me, no, not highway. Uh, it was under 3D models of city furniture. Let's go, no, not 3D models. Let's go to city furniture. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, sometimes I get lost in this list. Uh, right, so we can go and pick up that street lamp. There it is. And I can just select it. I'm happy with the spacing, the height, and all of those things because it's spaced at 10 meter intervals at the moment. But the problem is it's facing the wrong direction. Right, so let me move that to one side. Check this out. <laughs> Hopefully, you don't find yourself in the situation where it gets installed in that manner. I hope none of us do. Uh, but let me just toggle the display a little bit. Yeah, yeah that should be good. I want this to be rotated. So this should be rotated about the Z axis. But again, if you're a person that gets confused in terms of the Z axis or which axis you should, that's where the visuals part comes in. So let's say I thought initially it was the X axis, right? Now, if I click on this, first of all, you've got the, the slider tool or you can type in an exact angle, but can you see it's the wrong axis? It's going whole matrix on us there with that, with that bend. So that is wrong. And that's what I like about the software because you can see immediately when something doesn't look right. So again, the correct axis is the, the Z axis. And I'm gonna rot rotate it by 180. So here we go. And that should do it, perfecto, right? So let's go just check the right hand side out to see if it is done correctly. And here we are, perfect. So this is the methodology I applied for my styles that I've created. Of course, they don't look like this. I will show you what my custom styles are, but that is the exact methodology I've applied. And just to show you that it does work, let's go and draw a stretch of road using the one that we've created. So I will just type into the search bar example. Here we are, it pops up. It's now in our InfoWorks library. And if I drop in a stretch of road, you should see now it mimics or represents the style that we have created. Uh, let's go have a closer look here. Pretty good, pretty, pretty nice. Now, the reason why we use styles is when we convert it to the component aspect or for more detailed visualization, we can use a proper style to give much more information and design intent at such an early stage. Remember, this is still conceptual design. So just think of the amount of detail we've already gone through and we can portray, and we haven't even touched civil 3D yet. Okay. All right. So that was my modeling part for you today. I hope you would take some benefit from that but let's go on to adding the roads, intersections and roundabouts. How does it work? What intelligence is built into the software? I'm gonna show it to you. So before we go into that, 
I am going to show you the custom styles that I have created. So I'm going to delete that road and I'm going to show you the custom styles that we that I have got gotten so far, right? So you can see in my custom folder, this first one here is, I call it entrance. So when you enter the office park, it's going to be looking like this, all right? So you've got a lot of um, elements in there. Then I've created one for a bridge. So structural engineers or bridge designers, pay, stay tuned. One of the next webinars, we're going to be bringing in bridges. And the last one is for the general internal roads of the office park. So I've just got a median with some lights, a sidewalk, and a curb. All right. So that's what I've created using the same methodology that I have showed you just now a few minutes ago. And what we're going to do here, I want, let's say our project includes a bridge. So I'm going to start off there and I'm going to link it in. So let's go and select the planning roads. Okay. So I'm not going to use the example one. I'm going to use the one I created for a bridge. Okay. Yeah, that one there. And I am going to start off at that portion there of the road. I'm going to drive down there. You can see I can ex enter exact numbers if needed. Uh, what I like about the software, it's intelligent. It actually shows you that, check here, at this portion, you actually got a grade that you're going to be climbing up. If I double click, it has placed my style in. Again, we're still in conceptual design phase and it's so detailed. You see, it's quite intelligent. It picked up that there's some grading that needs to be done here. Um, and my bridge came in perfect. If you see the water doing a funny thing, don't worry, it's not a parallel universe or something like that. Uh, we will just have to assign that portion as a bridge. And you can see with the intelligence built into it, it automatically formed somewhat of an intersection that we can edit at a later stage. But that's maybe not part of our project. And we're gonna do a lot of intersections and roundabouts in our actual office park. So let's go select a different style. This is coming in. So let's say I've got, that's the main access in and out, right? So there's one way in, one way out, and that's gonna be the main route. And as you can see, my style came in perfect. Now, I've changed the lane width to show you that it even picks up the transitions. So you can see that's why those lines are actually targeted in that manner. So very, very clever of the software to do that. Ideally, you want a straight entrance straight out. You don't want a transition right there, but just wanted to show you that. And let's go and select now the internal style. And I'm just going to go across here. Now, this is quite great. All right. Uh, let's just go and select the select that again. So I'm going to select the internal part or the internal style that I've created, drop in an alignment or a planning road, and check this out. That is quite great. It has created an intersection for you automatically because it's intelligent. The software said, hey, there is an intersection that's going to be happening here. I will drop it in based on the current parameters. Right. And then, of course, it doesn't have to be straight road. So that's why I decided to show you that you can curve the roads. So we'll just do an S, for example. And let's say it's tying in there. Let's see what happens. Can you see that? It has already met, automatically created the intersections for you. And it also created like a slip lane there at that portion. So it's, it's a very intelligent software. And it also kept with my lights in the center of the median. So, yeah, I mean, all of these, all of this power is at your conceptual design stage, which is so good compared to the old way of doing it, right? I can add a vertex, I can split it, I can even drape it to my current platform, and I can convert it to a component road. So, let's maybe convert one of them to a component road so you can see the difference. So, I will convert that to a component road. And now it switches to a higher degree of uh, detail in the conceptual design phase. Okay, as you can see there. All right, you see it even got the banks. I'm also gonna create a component road for that, just that section. I can do it for all of them that I have modeled. 
Okay, but now I can, you can see this road marking that has come through as well as parameters for the actual inter intersection. So I can go and change the size of the car and check the start. It will update the radius accordingly. That is really intelligent for a conceptual design tool. It is really good. I can also adjust those grips according to what I want to. You can see I can punch in the radius. The reason why it's not moving is it also checks that there's an intersection to the right of it. There's not enough space for you to make it bigger. So I can even drop the car, maybe make it just a normal van or delivery truck. You see it also updated. Now you see there's enough space. It will allow me to increase or decrease that radius depending on my uh, ability. I can also stretch those incoming lanes, outcoming lanes, those regions. I can actually change it depending on what I want it to be. So again, very, very insightful design, okay? I can edit it as I want to. I can also drop in a roundabout. So let's go and drop in a roundabout. So I just change it from an intersection. Now you might get this. Now the reason why this is happening, the software again is very clever. It's saying that there's not enough space to create a roundabout because that intersection on the top, it's too close. So you see, it's very, very uh, clever or insightful. It helps you as a designer to say that, you know what, you don't have enough space for this type of a feature, right? So that's what's happening there, okay? So you can even go and customize the entrance lanes like you're seeing on the right there. So again, if I go and select the roundabout, you'll see it still won't allow me to. That's why you've got that exclamation mark there. So what I can do, I can, um, I can either shift that road alignment if I want to, right? So maybe I can bring it a little bit up, something like that. If I click, it will update now. You'll see now, because I didn't grip it properly, it even graded it. So I want to show you that by trial and error, the grips are very sensitive. So it's a very honest review on the actual application, but you do get used to it very quickly. So you can just say undo control Z and it'll go back to what it wants to. And I'm, I think I'm gonna delete that S road there, All right? But before we do that, I can also see the profile view. You can see it gives me the markings for where the two intersections are. I can add a vertical curve or a PI. As I move it, you see it also updates in the plan. So imagine, normally all of this, we do it in Civil 3D, very late in the design process. I can also put in a station marker to show me where I am in the actual profile view and on plan. And I can drag, I can drop, I can add a PI, a vertices, whatever you want to call it, and it will update accordingly, okay? So again, all of this functionality is built into the software. It's out of the box. I haven't done anything. And now you can see, uh, because on this side, what I did was I moved that road a little bit better. I aligned the vertical alignment, and now it has enough space and intelligence to model a roundabout. So let's delete that S curve again, because that I was just playing around there. And this is the roundabout that has been generated. Of course, these are all fully editable and you can size them according to different standards that are built in. You can edit these standards in Civil 3D. You can see again, based on the standard, now the elevation point dropped. So that's why you've got to detail something like that. So I can go now and either just change the PI or add a PI at that point, right? And I can either drop it down a little bit so it might tie. And if I click into the model, it should update. So if I click there, let's see what happens. Here we are, right? So that is a mini roundabout that we've just created. Again, I am showing you more or less the functionality here. Yours will be much more simpler if you know what you're doing. I'm just showing, showcasing to you all of the options that you have for road design. So intersections, roundabouts, roadways, those type of things. 
right? So here we are. I can adjust all of those dimensions, believe it or not. That looks quite nice, actually. And I can actually go and adjust that diameter or that radius. You can see it's currently 40. I can go and actually edit it. Now, if I go and click on the grip, I can drag it or I can enter an exact value. So I'm just going to drag it for this example. And you see parametric modeling or intelligent modeling, it has updated quite great. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show you in terms of the designs. So that's enough messing around. I am going to now show you from the models or from playing around what I have modeled uh, for this exercise or for this series. So that's the great thing with actual um, proposals in InfraWorks, OK? You can see also metadata comes through where you can actually add it when you are in a or when you create a component road, all of that will be available to you. OK. You can see even the changes are marked out, the lens, the grading. I can select each and every individual component and I can even change it and swap it as I go along if I don't like what I see. OK. So that's the difference between a component road and a planning road. Component is much more detailed design. Now, instead of you sitting here and watching me model the entire site, I have done it and I've put it under a conceptual design final proposal. And this is what I was left with. Okay, looks quite nice. We've got a lot of internal roads, maybe a bit too much, but anyway. Uh, it's graded nicely, it picked up my site, I've got some internal roads. And you might see like a weird triangle there. I'm gonna show you what that is now. It's called what, what we call a gradient, grading area or a coverage area. So I can go assign a coverage where I want a specific detail to go. So let's say for example, this portion here is where it's gonna be paved and I'm going to uh, drop in a building here with a parking lot and whatever, which is most of the cases. I am doing this very roughly. If you do this very patiently, you can get almost the exact shape you're looking for. Okay. And as you can see, it creates what we call a coverage. And now I can go and overlay a building if I have it already, or I can access a, a generic 3D model in InfraWorks and throw it on there, populate this entire site and give it for an, a conceptual proposal or something like that, all right? So we can go and actually assign an elevation from there if it needs to be raised or lowered. So that's what's quite nice about the coverage. You can actually drape it or you can get it at a set elevation. So if I wanted that higher, I could have set an elevation to it and it could have been done. Okay. So that was a, a lot of talking. I've just got a little bit more that I want to show you. Before the architects get on, on my back, I've got you covered here as well. Uh, so let's say you want to add, you might have a, a model that you've done in format. You can bring it into Civil 3D, bring it or not, believe it or not. Um, or you can use some of the placeholders that are in InfraWorks. So that's what I'm going to do. So I go to the buildings library. I can bring in a lot of different objects. So it can be a 3D model. So if you're looking for like houses, railings, those type of things, anything what we call a city or site furniture. Or if I want to use materials, just generic colors, I can use that. Or um, in this case, I'm going to use a facade. A facade is quite nice. It gives a nice conceptual feel if you don't have your exact rivet building yet, but you can put it as a placeholder. So I'm gonna use a facade for concrete and glass, and it's gonna be the Ezra style. And I can draw the building outline. Again, I can type the exact dimensions, but I'm just gonna be clicking, right? And you see it's calculating the area as well while I'm doing that. And let's say maybe that's my building. Now check this out it drops in a building for me with that facade. The facade is also intelligent. So if you adjust the height, which we're gonna be seeing just now, so let's zoom in. 
that's quite nice detail for conceptual design model, I must say. Um, you can create custom facades and stuff like that. So I can adjust the height, I can make it smaller, I can make it higher or lower. Uh, I can type in a punch in an exact value. Uh, I think that's going to be okay. I can also move and rotate this building. So for example, maybe it wasn't annotated or positioned correctly for some reason. I can go and click on that and I can actually just rotate it very easily. Okay. So that's the, the grips are very easy, very, very easy. I can bring it up using the axes. So that was a Z axis. And I can also move the entire building if it's in the wrong position. So architects, conceptual designers, building designers, if you have a model that has a lot of detail in it, which I hope you do, you can actually bring it into InfraWorks and lay it in for a really realistic conceptual visualization, right? And remember, we're still at the concept design stage. So I'm just gonna delete that because I was thinking of completing the entire site, but I want to build it as we go on with the series so that you can come back and see how it looks. And last but not least is now bringing the InfluX model to Civil 3D. So here we are in Civil 3D 2021. Again, it also has the BIM 360 integration, which is great if you're working off BIM 360. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new drawing and I'm going to use the Devitech template. The IDAS template is the brilliant template, especially for South Africa. It's the best I've seen. You can access it for free on their website. You just got to sign up and they will send it to you. Very, very good so, template. So first of all, we're going to go and set the coordinate system in our civil 3D. So if you type in R, R right, um, to hot base hook 27 negative, right? And we hit OK. So remember, we already pre-configured that or created it. And you'll see now the geolocation tab becomes active. OK, so now what we'll do is we'll go to the insert tab and we will link in our SQLite file from InfraWorks. So there it is there. You'll see if the coordinate systems will match. If it doesn't, you'll get an error that you need to go fix, right? So I can decide whether I want to just bring design objects, planning objects. Those are selection sets, if I could use that word. And if you wanted to go and refine it, so let's say the design objects, I want to go and see what's going on here. All right, so it might take a few seconds to load, depending on the nature of your SQLite file, if it's a lot. So I can check which objects I want to come in. So I maybe want all of the terrain. Again, those are planning roads. Those are not component roads. The component roads will come in with the prelim corridor or conceptual road corridor that you can work off from. So if there are conceptual design roads in there, you can bring them in. All right. Alternatively, I'm going to put my computer to the test here. I am going to go select everything. OK. So I can go to the selection set and say, bring in all the objects you find in InfraWorks. There is 577 elements here. And this will take me less than a minute to import. Right, so the functionality is quite good. Of course, I'm gonna keep the level of display as on my computer. That if you increase, then it's gonna be a bit, if you don't have enough computing power, it's gonna hit your RAM very hard. Right, so as you can see, it brought in that entire site. Now remember, we weren't working on the entire site, but let's go check if our geolocation is correct. First of all, just to show you that it has brought in the conceptual surface, I'm going to go put in a style, select one from the many Devotech styles there, all right? And there is this terrain surface, that's quite a big terrain surface. Remember, this model was 84 square kilometers. That is a big model. Okay. As you can see, the alignments are also in there. Those are planning alignments. Again, in the next webinar, I will probably bring in the detailed design and you'll see how it looks. All right. Now, to see if our model is geolocated to South Africa correctly, we will switch in the aerial map. If the aerial map is incorrect, that means our model is not geolocated. 
But in this case, it is because if we followed the correct process and it sits in exactly where it should be in South Africa, all right? It doesn't end up in Egypt. We've had a lot of uh, discussions with users. The site ends up in Egypt. There's our site there, right? But when I import it with the conceptual des uh, component design roads soon, uh, then you will see the corridors that come in into the next webinar. Okay, so I can go and crop this area or capture a certain area that I want the map to only be displayed on to save my computing power. All right, I can also go and adjust the display or the quality of the picture. I'll make it very fine. Okay, so it updates the pixelation of it. All right, if I zoom in, you can see now it's much more clearer. Okay. Now that I just wanted to show you that it is very synchronized in the, its approach, but in this case, we didn't need to bring the entire model in. So the question you're probably having is, what if I only wanted to bring in the platform that I'm designing? You can. So that's why I've created a second step. So the first step was to show you the power of the software or the synchronization. The second one is to make it smart. So I'm going to open our model up again in Influx. And I'm going to go to my bookmark, it becomes very handy right now. And I will zoom into where I have created my site. OK. Now, I am only interested in this area. The rest of the area is purely for visualization. And I can go now draw a polygon around the area that I want. So think of it as if you're cropping your model. So I want maybe somewhere starting there, coming down this way, capturing the bridge, maybe that intersection, maybe make it a proper polygon. Click there. Once I double click on my last point, I can go hit OK, apply and OK. You'll see it might take a little bit of time to generate because now it is updating your model according to your cut. And if I hit OK, you will see now I've only got that model. Now all I gotta do is follow the same steps that I did previously where I went to insert, select the InfraWorks model in Civil 3D and it will only bring in this portion of the site. Okay, this was a lot of talking for this webinar, uh, but that brings me to the end. So let's wrap it up. So as you've seen today, we've localized it to our own South African coordinate system. Okay, which was our heart BSO 94, Allo 27. I showed you how to do that. Then we created a nice grading platform and a conceptual site in InfraWorks. It looks pretty damn cool with the render built into it. Then I showed you how to also create custom styles that you can then use to create your roads, your roundabouts, your intersections in an intelligent manner, looking at the different options of using a planning road versus a component road. And then, of course, we linked it into Civil 3D, which will help us now on the detailed design phase because so much of it was done at a very accurate level, even though it was at the conceptual design. So that's about it for my webinar. Um, we will take questions in a few in a minute or so. If you want to get in contact with us here at Baker Baines. Those are all of our handles. So LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can just type in Baker Baines and we will definitely pop up. Reach out to us, shout out. Uh, we are very vocal and active on these platforms and it's nice to interact with the fellow users. And last but not least, um, if you wanna connect with me personally, we can connect. I am Shui Binas, the BIM Technical Specialist for Civil Infrastructure here at Baker Baines. So if you want to chat, you want to say hi, you want to give me some feedback, I mean, you're more than welcome to. You can reach me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn and also my email address. I also popped it into the chat box so we can connect much more easier. If you have any good comments or constructive criticism, I don't mind. You can always drop that to me. Or if you have any ideas for a webinar, something that's probably troubling you that you need help on, drop me a mail, drop me a LinkedIn. Uh, we can chat about it and hopefully soon we can do a webinar tackling that existing problem. 
Um, as you can see, I'm very much civil infrastructure focused. So I do a lot of uh, roads, bridges, gradings, platforms, civils, mining, point clouds. Uh, it's a lot of, it's a long list. Um, if you're looking at more or less product focuses, they are all there on the screen. The main thing is our webinar recording is on YouTube. So we've got a Baker Bain's YouTube channel. So if someone missed it and you thought that this would have really benefited them, please tag them in our LinkedIn post or my LinkedIn post or in the comments. Um, and they can actually have access to see this webinar. So that's it from me. I'm going to open up the chat box. If there are any questions, comments, like I said, this is a thing that they just, just decided off the bat to do. Didn't actually get the final details. I just took a problem and made a solution out of it. So I'm very curious as to hear what are your comments with this first part of the webinar series? Is it useful to you? Please uh, use the chat box. Let me know. If you have any questions that are bugging you, more technical, you also can drop that in. So please, it's, it helps me as a designer to see if I'm on the right track with you guys and it's helping you. Um, if not, we can always modify it as time goes, but I would need your impact or your support on this. So please uh, use the chat box. I'll give it a minute or so. Any questions, comments, feedback, I really appreciate it. Okay, so we've got our first question here from Johan. Um, do you have a previous webinar video on the importing of survey as we see from the survey? Yes, they are all on the um, our Baker Mains YouTube channel. Please go have a check at it. And if you import it and you set that negative coordinate system, it will come in correct. Um, just remember that once you've got it in, and you put your geolocation on, that will confirm if you are correct or not. But good question. Definitely the, the, the videos are on our YouTube channel. And they're also covered on our training courses as well. So if you wanted to focus purely detail on a full comprehensive civil course, you can always get in contact with us and see what's going on from there. But thank you, Johan. Okay, there's another question here regarding component roads versus planning roads. You still don't understand the difference. Okay, think of it like this. If I have to go back to AutoCAD, AutoCAD blocks, right? They're not really intelligent. They're just a representation of what's there, depending on how you do them, unless they're a dynamic block. But think of a block as a planning road. I will draw an alignment and a planning road will give the actual representation along that alignment. You can't edit any, any geometry. You can't edit the lane widths or anything like that, right? Because once the style is created, it's a block. And once you convert it to a component road, think of you exploding that block. So now you can go and actually customize each and every feature from the lane widths to the slopes, to the curb, to the sidewalks to the median to the trees you can you can edit each and everything so that's the difference between them again for conceptual design it's very nice to use the planning roads it doesn't require that much of clicking and that much of precis precision on your side so use the planning roads and if you want it to be much more detailed and to pick up exact levels and stuff then you will need component roads to help you do that i hope that helps <laughs> okay, I see people are getting curious now because they want to know what's on the next series. Okay, part two, I, to be quite honest, I haven't really figured out the appropriate title yet because I'm doing this as we're going. Um, I just finished this one this morning, believe it or not. So I would say the next one will focus on continuation of this model where we're going to bring in those roads. So InfraWorks, all of the roads will be component roads. Then we will bring it into Civil 3D. And I wouldn't be going through the modeling of the Civil 3D corridors because that's going to take me some time 
There's a lot of roads that I've done there, but I will do the final road corridor and the final design or road design, and I will show it to you how it looks. Um, and then, yeah, then we'll take it from there. Okay, so the structural guys are coming through now. So when are you doing the bridge? Ah, okay. So I'm gonna be doing the bridge probably in the next webinar, okay? So I'm gonna show you how you can create a detailed bridge design and then link it to Revit and do your reinforcement or rebar detailing as well as your drawing from there. I'm not gonna be doing, again, not gonna be doing the actual modeling. I'm not gonna show you how to put in the rebar and stuff like that. This is focused purely on collaboration, this series. Otherwise, we're gonna need a lot more webinar sessions and I don't think that's gonna, gonna be that possible yet, okay? But yeah, we're definitely gonna be doing some Revit stuff. So next webinar, I'm gonna be using InfraWorks, Civil 3D, Revit, and Inventor, okay? So those are the, the software I'm gonna to touch on, but I hope that helps. Okay, this is a good question, right? What was the purpose of adding the coverages? So, a uh, good question, at least someone has paid uh, attention to detail there. The reason why we add the coverages, so if, the rest of the users have forgotten what the coverage was. Remember I put that asphalt covering by the roads to put the building on? That what, that's what we're referring to. What is the purpose of it? So think of it also as a placeholder. So in conceptual design, now if I import that to Civil 3D, it will give me that area as a polyline, which I can then convert to a feature line and detail to an exact level. So that's where it comes into play. So that's what we normally do. Normally we, uh, well, normally what I do is I drop in all of the roads where more or less wanted relatively, bring it into Civil 3D, and then I will use feature lines to actually grade where the buildings are gonna be sitting on. So your parking lot and those type of things, and it works pretty good. So that grading gives, or that coverage gives an idea as to the relative position for me. So it helps me to actually edit and so on and so forth. But good question, very, very good question. Okay, I do not see any other questions. So I think we can officially call it quits for today. So thank you so much for joining us. I know this is, was a, another heavy hitting webinar, uh, picking up from the IDAS. Oh, actually, there is one question that sneaked in. Can I import a file CSV with existing PI and VPI points into Infrax? Yes, you can. You can. What I would suggest is if you have all of that embedded into one CSV, I like using land XML because land XML is much more functional. So I would say convert that to a land XML and then import that in. You'll be good to go. All right. So, but remember, you can get a very high detail of a level of detail in the conceptual design phase, but Civil 3D is the detail design tool. So don't get um, too hooked onto InfraWorks. Of course, if you can, if you've been using it for a long time and you're used to it, you can get it to a very, very high accurate level. But from perspective level, InfraWorks, Conceptual design, civil 3D, detailed design, that's it. I'll give it a few more seconds in case something else sneaks in quickly. All right, three, two, one, that's it. We're gonna call it. Thank you so much for joining my webinar. I hope it was insightful. I hope it gave you an idea as to what you can do with InfraWorks and civil 3D and I hope to see all of you for the next one coming up soon. Take care, have a great Friday and catch you all soon. Bye everyone.